Yo, Joe, let's roll out. This is the inaugural episode of Modular Media's Saturday Morning Panel and Transformers Podcast. I am one of your hosts, The Vacuuminator, but I am joined for the first time when it's just the two of us by Snowcone83. How are you doing this afternoon, sir? That's me, and I'm doing just dandy. Excellent. Are you doing fine and dandy or just dandy? Just dandy. Okay, well, uh, this is something uh, that I have kind of had boiling away in the back of my brain cauldron for a long, long time in one form or another, and right now just kind of felt like the perfect time to do it. Uh, We've actually been working on this uh, almost since the start of the year in the background, just trying to get uh, thoughts together and getting like the name and everything right for what we wanted it to be. And one of the things we really knew we should do right away is do this episode zero because uh, this might bring in new people to modular media, kind of like This Week in Toku did. And much like This Week in Toku, we wanted to have a episode zero kind of FAQ episode to establish a baseline of the kind of uh, people uh, Snowcone and I are and why we're interested in G.I. Joe and Transformers and just kind of like where you can see where we're coming from going forward. So that's what this is going to kind of be. Uh, and then we will see you back here next week for our actual proper first episode where we'll be getting into the real format of the show. And uh, if you want to be back for that next episode, Please, please make sure you support this first episode zero if you're listening. Hit like on the YouTube upload. Comment down below with like your thoughts and feelings on G.I. Joe and Transformers. How Some of your answers to our FAQ that we're going to do a little later in the show. And just generally that you're excited for the show. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell in order to enable notifications so that you get the next episode of the show delivered right to your sub box. Uh, you can also follow Modular Media on social media to keep up with all our news and updates. We have a Twitter at Modular Media, a TikTok at Modular Media, a Tumblr at Modular Media, and a Reddit, which is r slash Modular Media. But uh, that's all the plugging and tugging I got to do this episode. So let's go ahead and start getting into some introductory stuff. And I, I guess I'll go first so Co- uh, Snowcone can kind of get an idea of where I'm going with uh, this. Uh, so Basically, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I go by The Vacuuminator online, uh, but my uh, civilian name is uh, Simeon, so occasionally you may hear Snowcone slip into calling me that, or me slip into calling him by his civilian name. Uh, My pronouns are he, him, I am cisgendered, uh, and I am 26, currently healing from the southern United States, uh, and and just generally I try to I try to be a good boy and I try to I try to say nice things about things that I like and people that I like. And and that's that's really all you need to know. If you want, you can go check out my my own YouTube videos to get more of a sense of who I am. They're things, they're at the vacuuminator on youtube.com. But that's that's really what you need to know about me for now. Uh Snowcone, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience just a little bit? Uh hello, my name is Snowcone. Um otherwise known as Cody uh, or Snowdy, if you really want to. Um, no, I don't know. I uh, I hopefully wish to start doing some YouTube and stuff like that, but uh, I guess the things that have always drawn me to these characters is I've always been interested, obsessed with uh, that type of media, military stuff like that, and comics and whatnot. Um, but as far as me personally, I mean, my most active social right now would be instagram um which is never underscore robot and i'm from florida which uh i, mean, I don't know I, I, come find me place. in florida yeah <laughs> come here um, if you dare that that is what they should put on the welcome sign now honestly <laughs> oh man but uh 
Yeah, that's 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 kind of the basic gist of the two of us. So to kind of give you an idea on what this show is going to be going forward, uh, obviously, like I said, this is our new G.I. Joe and Transformers specific podcast, and we want the through line here to be covering the original comics. Uh, we are going to start uh, with a real American hero from Marvel in 1982, June of 1982, actually. Uh, and that's going to be kind of the gimmick of this show. We're going to be covering this month's issues from 40 years ago. Uh, and we're going to, this is going to be a monthly show. We're just going to kind of check in with you once a month because doing this weekly would kind of, kind of defeat the comic thing. It would get us out of sync. And also it would be hard for me to corral Cody that, that regularly. It's hard enough to get him on modular components every week. Um, so uh, you're going to see us cover whatever issues of the G.I. Joe or Transformers comic came out this month, 40 years ago. Uh, but that's going to be the middle of the show. The show is actually going to be a bit of a comic sandwich. Uh, and the two pieces of bread are going to be covering one or two of the biggest news stories for either brand in the last month at the beginning and then at the end uh discussing some new releases that we have gotten into could be new episodes of a show uh a new movie release or a new toy release and more often than not it probably will be toys just because cody and i are kind of toy guys first and foremost yeah mm -hmm. and it seems like more and more if we we probably wouldn't ever really need to stretch for some new news oh yeah it is especially if it's going to be on a monthly basis yeah, I won't lie. A big part of me wanting to do this show is like, I am a Transformers guy first and foremost, but I have gotten more and more into G.I. Joe as G.I. Joe as a franchise has kind of ramped up more and more over the last couple of years, even though I did have some childhood attachment to it. Um, but I think that is is what you need to know. Uh, about the general gist of the show. We'll be back uh, in a week with the first episode of that format. But right now, we are going to do uh, some kind of general FAQ to get you guys uh, familiarized with our experience of G.I. Joe and Transformers and sort of understand where we're going to be coming from with certain things. Uh, so first and foremost, kind of the obvious question to start off with, how did you get into these branches? franchises and what was your starting point uh snow cone do you want to take the lead on this or should i um i can go ahead and take the lead on this one but uh it's going to be interesting trying to pinpoint specifically like what was really first because like i mean i did watch the cartoon a lot um but i had the toys first and i had the uh actual like 12 inch scale toys alongside like various ones from like the 80s and stuff like that i had like one o-ring character i think like that but i used to have a massive box of like the old school gi joe figures uh, were those like inherited that... from a family member or something well i mean no when i was a kid they were making them still oh I yeah that's right I, I forget about that. and they had a they had a the proper scaled or like they had the foot uh one foot scaled figures um and the things that would like get me into that is like i, I had a lot of Family that was in the military always thought like tactical stuff was, of course, cool. Um, I don't know. I thought I was going to go into the military for a long time. And uh, I also just always like gravitated towards comics and stuff. So it's kind of been like always, like for as long as I can remember, at least. Mm -hmm. um, the the first things I remember having that were like G.I. Joe related were like uh, the, the big ones. But I remember collecting Valor versus Venom the most and like the stuff that was right before that um and then getting like kind of like always caring about the franchise and then falling back in love with it whenever they did the uh the 25th and 30th anniversary uh series sets right on uh well i guess for me i i do kind of have like some more I, I guess, like, specific ideas of how I got into things. Like, with Transformers, I can very clearly remember my first figure was Energon Skyblast. Uh, I am very much a Unicron, a Unicron trilogy and Valor vs. Venom era uh, kid. That is when I got into it. I have a soft spot for those points in both franchises, but I have a respect for really all of the franchises except for one or two, like, glaring problem children uh that hopefully we'll never have to talk about but um 
Uh, yeah, my first Transformer was Energon Sky Blast. Uh, I kind of rented DVDs of Energon and Armada from uh, video rental stores back when those were still a thing as a kid. Uh, but my family actually got cable just in time for when Cybertron started airing. So I watched Cybertron every day. I have very vivid memories of getting up and and taking my Transformers out into the living room every morning to watch the new episode of Cybertron when it was kind of airing in syndication on Cartoon Network. Um, and then obviously the movies happened and everything, and that, that was kind of just off to the races with Transformers. G.I. Joe, it is slightly different, but in, in a way that will kind of ring the same in that uh, I, I remember very specifically there was a day where uh, my mom and my sisters were off doing something and my dad had me for the day and he had to go to a work meeting all afternoon and he couldn't just leave me anywhere. I had to be like close to him, but he didn't want me to be bored and he didn't want me to be like in the way. So at the time he had one of those, one of those big like painted window vans, like that was his main work vehicle. And he also had a, a TV with a VHS player in the back of it. So he took me to Walmart and he let me pick out two movies. And the two movies I ended up picking out were the Valor vs. Venom animated movie and Hot Wheels Highway 35. Um, and uh, got some snacks. And then I spent that afternoon. I watched the Hot Wheels movie first. And I'm still very much nostalgic for that Hot Wheels movie in the same way I am for Valor vs. Venom, but then I watched Valor vs. Venom, and I got about halfway through it, and then my dad got back from his meeting, and he was like, you ready to go home? And I was like, no, I have to finish this! This is great! And then, like, we rushed home so that I could watch it on the home TV. And, like, I I, wa I watched all for the credits. I watched the freaking G.I. Joe trading card game instructional video that was at the end of that. Mm. Um, and then... Uh, it was a few years before I actually got any Valor vs. Venom figures. I ended up getting them when they got repackaged for dollar stores. Uh, and I remember very specifically, uh, because these were the only G.I. Joes I had for a few years. This is like what I consider to be my childhood lineup. I had Dusty, I had Televiper, I had Kamakura, Snake Eyes, Night Creeper, Baroness, and I think Heavy Duty. Um, I'm pretty sure that was my childhood G.I. Joe collection. Um, and I would very much like to completely have all those characters again in classified at some point. Uh, but uh, the 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 movies came a few years later, and I always kind of stayed casually into G.I. Joe from that point out. Uh, I kind of missed a boat on the 25th and 30th anniversary stuff because at the time I didn't have a lot of disposable income and I could only really buy one or two things from one. Line. And uh, at the time, that was uh, that was Transformers uh, Classics Universe Generations type stuff. Um, but now I'm an adult. I got a big boy job. I've got a little bit more disposable income, and I am trying my best to keep up with classified series and what catches my interest from Legacy. Because uh, I'm not I'm not buying everything from Legacy. Uh, it's it's more like just. What directly homages the Unicron trilogy is what I'm buying at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that kind of covers both questions, actually, because that, or both the first two questions, because that also covers how much have you seen and slash experience? I would say I've seen most Transformers and G.I. Joe media outside of the comics. Uh, there's a couple Japanese uh, shows and manga I haven't experienced for Transformers. Uh, for G.I. Joe, it's really, I've seen every animated uh, show or movie. I've seen every live action movie. Uh, it's it's just the comics that I'm a little spotty on. Like, I've, uh, I've, I've read a bit of both the Marvel books. I've read a bit of the IDW Transformers stuff, but never really gotten into it. And that's part of why I wanted to do this podcast. It's going to give us an excuse to really get into it. Uh, how about you, Cody, though? How much of the, of the fiction have you experienced? So for Transformers, probably just about all of it, excluding maybe the same few ones you're talking about. I've watched like a little bit of like G2, like the, the Japanese stuff. Um, but like, I, I never really vibe with it too much. Um, I mean, I, I technically have something from like every single, like I have a toy from every single American, uh, like series slash like toy line just about. Yeah. Cause your toy collection is much more extensive than mine. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have a lot of my original toys from like 
robots in disguise and armada um my the first transformers i remember like messing with i think were beast wars figures because i had a, a trans metals prowl that my cousin trey gave me i still have it somewhere i don't know where it is it's not complete or anything like that and like I, the stuff like that i i got from like yard sales and whatnot mm-hmm. and the the beast wars trans metals figures would always be in those like bins and be easy to spot um and i got a lot of my cousins like old toys and stuff but um my first like franchise i got to experience fully was armada but i mean as far as gi joe goes in media like both of them i haven't really messed with the comics too much i have like uh the transformers gi joe crossover and the marvel one um the shorter ones and i read a little bit of those um i used to be like really obsessed with like uh like this stuff even when i was like uh like whenever the gi joe stuff was happening i remember like always seeing that uh statue like the two prime and megatron statues on like big uh big bad toy store with like snake eyes and storm shadow sitting on them i think i know what you're talking about yeah that that rings a bell but yeah i mean um i don't think there's much of either i, I i've seen the movie i used to watch the gi joe cartoon on um i forget what channel it was on but i'd watch it like every single morning before i'd go to school Mm-hmm. like it was just on something i i just watched it it was all of it it, it might have been the military channel i'm not sure hmm. uh yeah I, I i have also seen a, a lot of the uh not now that it's all available on youtube except for like gi joe extreme uh i've seen i've seen a lot of the the animation and feel like i know it pretty well um but uh i guess that kind of takes us into uh, as of now, uh, having not read a lot of the comics, what is your favorite version of the fiction? Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, for me, with Transformers, it's definitely going to be uh, Cyberverse. I I really enjoyed that show from beginning to end. It kind of just felt like the perfect catch-all amalgamation of every Transformers continuity, dumbed down ever so slightly to make it more palatable for kids while still telling a really complex and engaging story. Um, and GI Joe, I mean, I'm not, it's, it's, guess what guys? I, I really like GI Joe Renegades. I think that's a very good show. Uh, I think it perfectly like I would, I have loved to have seen it continued. Hell yeah. Uh, but I also really like how the way the first season ends, you can kind of just say in your head, oh, it's it's a prequel to the original Sunbow show, and it works. Uh, it's it's a solid, very complex uh, and fun reimagining with some good character work in there. Uh, and uh, both of those uh, shows have the same thing in common, which is they made me want to buy toys, which is what these brands should do for a good version of their fiction, I feel. Uh, how about you, though, Snow Cone? I don't know. That's a that's a pretty hard one for Transformers. Like I've I've liked every version, but I I always accept it as like something that's an ever changing, evolving story. So I'm never too upset. Like I'm not stuck in stuck on one specific thing. Um, I mean, if I had to really pick my favorite version of the story, the 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 one that I felt felt like the most, like this should be how it is, I might have to go with the games um the, the War and Fall of Cybertron. Games? yeah um because that that whole series I, isn't that part of like a, a further extended universe of it's the part of the aligned continuity which means it's yeah. in continuity with prime and i and robots in disguise 2015 yeah that works that'll work for me that works <laughs> yes um because prime i think is like my i think prime might, might be the best one for me yeah, my opinion, for I think a long it's like time was my favorite version. To me, Prime is like, what if the movies were done well, whereas uh, uh, Cyberverse is, what if G1 was done well under a modern context? My low-key favorite is uh, probably uh, animated, because the just the toys for that, like, just the, the animation, I already love the artist and everything like that, but, like, the toys still managed to look right which was always crazy to me, like seeing like the weird bent legs and stuff like that and weird, crazy chins and stuff. And it just worked, but I don't know. Um, as far as GI Joe, my favorite version of that, 
would probably be the original cartoon because like I, I don't know it's 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 like comfortable for me i think it's comfortable for so many people but i just like love that i like i, I love everything about that um reading what i have of this of the i don't know if we're supposed to talk about that yet I don't know. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, but like yeah. I, I do agree with you that the original cartoon is very good too. The Sunbow animated series of GI Joe, uh, like I, I watched through all of it for the first time last year, having only seen bits and pieces beforehand, and like it is a lot better than you expect it to be with sort of the the modern reputation of Sunbow shows, where like. A lot of there's there's still a pocket of Transformers fans that are like, no, the Sunblow G1 cartoon is the best thing ever. You can't say anything bad about it. And then there's a lot of other older fans who are like, yeah, no, that was garbage. You guys just have nostalgia goggles. I'm I, I'm not sure where I fall because I haven't watched any Sunbow Transformers in a long time. But having now watched the original G.I. Joe all the way through and also I watched Gem and the Holograms for the first time the year before that. I think Sunbow stuff might actually be underrated. I actually really enjoy the original G.I. Joe. The first miniseries is kind of rough, but after that, it gets off to a really nice clip. Um, I, uh, I'll say this. Um, there was a point in my life where I wanted to rewatch, or I wanted to watch the first time, like the original G.I. Transformers cartoon. There, there was a point in my life where I felt like I had to like try to watch everything of a, a piece of media. And so I did that with Gundam. And tried to do that with Transformers and a few other things. And I had never... See, I grew up loving... I used to always rent the 1985 movie. Mm-hmm. Or you um, mean 86? 86 movie, yeah. yeah. I'd rent it from Blockbuster all the time. So, like, that was my experience to those characters from G1. Mm-hmm. Was purely the movie version. I had never really watched episodes from the cartoon. But what I have seen was just always watching the G.I. Joe cartoon. And I remember watching, like, the G.I. Joe cartoon while, like, other stuff was coming out, like Renegades and, like, um, whenever they were doing Valor vs. Venom. Um, I, I, I can't fucking remember. I think it might have been... I don't know. But my mom used to work for Time Warner Cable, um, and so we had, like, the full suite of everything. I, I grew up with, like... Not a lot of money, but like because she worked at a cable company, we had every up every up like channel ever. Nice. Um, and I used to only watch like the military channel and like a couple cartoon networks, and there was a classic cartoon channel, and it was on one of those. It was always on in the mornings on one of those, and I would just I would just I got I, I don't even know if I did watch all of it. I guess I've gone back and watched it plenty of times. Like it's like a comfort show. I can kind of watch it on any episode. Um, I'm just, it's just a long winded way of me saying that, uh, I had no real experience with the original Transformers cartoon. And when I watched that all the way through again, it's bad. Kind of. I mean, okay. that's not, not, not objective. I don't know. Well, the, the animation is like not, it is not the same. Mm-hmm. It is not the same quality. GI Joe kind of felt like it was more on purpose with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, Transformers felt a little less so to me. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um, so well, let's get let's get a little more specific here. Um, let's talk about like some of our favorite characters, uh, just kind of across the board from both franchises. Um, I I kind of tend to flip flop around when it comes to Transformers. I'm definitely an Autobot guy, and I'm definitely kind of a scrimblowy Autobot guy. Like I, I like characters who don't tend to get a lot of focus in the modern era. Uh, Inferno was my favorite as a kid because, uh, like the the first toy I picked, the first Transformers toy I picked out myself was Energon Inferno. Uh, um, I I really like Perceptor. Uh, trying to think uh energon scattershot is another childhood favorite um but also uh if i were to pick a decepticon i really like tidal wave is my boy i am i am one of those people constantly banging on hasbro's door in the fan stream live chats going hey when's legacy tidal wave happening i need that toy please uh but also like i have the original toy and it's probably my favorite toy of all time like, like genuinely, I think it's a perfect encapsulation of everything a Transformer can and should be. Uh, but uh, that, that's just talking about Transformers. When it comes to G.I. Joe, 
I mean, any of the ones I listed as like the Valor versus Venom figures I had as a kid, you can say that's a favorite. I have a soft spot for that design. Uh, probably like when it comes to G.I. Joe, I am much more of a, a into the ninjas than I am to the military or the sci fi stuff. But I, I still like all of it. So like I tend to gravitate towards characters like Kamakura, like Snake Eyes, like Storm Shadow, like Jinx uh, or Night Creeper. Um, but I also like uh, more more military characters like Dusty. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter uh, is the man. And um, sci-fi sort of character designs and whatnot, like the Televipers or the Bats, uh, are all very cool and fun to me. You know, I'm, I'm one of those guys who's kind of like, it, it can all go together. It doesn't have to be crazy sci-fi all the time. It doesn't have to be hard military realism. You can mix and match with your G.I. Joe. Uh, how, how about you, though, Snow Cone? Yeah, I think when you mix and match, when it really hits that stride right, I think... The perfect example of that would be classified right now for me um, mm -hmm. when they get that right mix of everything because it's all just over the top and silly and crazy and cool. As far as my characters, like I'll probably start off with G.I. Joe. Um, Gung Ho was always one of my favorites. I he just he always seemed really cool, even like the classic colors. I had, I think it was the Valor vs. Venom uh, figure from the two pack where he, uh, he had like the little. He had a grenade launcher and a removable hat. I mean, it was kind of like an updated version of the OG character. Um, I don't know, like when it GI Joe, like I, I've always been obsessed with like military stuff. I always think it's cool, and I've always wanted like my own military setups, like little dioramas and whatnot. And me and my friends would always play with like army men and whatnot and stuff like that. So, like, I love like a good grunt. I like rock and roll is one of my favorite like uh 30th anniversary figures i have um i really end up falling for the cobra characters more um cobra bat is probably like my favorite toy i mean it is obviously but um i don't know man like it can kind of jump everywhere but i'd say gung-ho og cobra commander um i really like sigma six too so i really liked that uh tunnel rat is one of my other favorite characters and i've kind of been waiting for a figure of him and as far as Transformers go, it's always been like Omega Supreme. Uh, I've always been obsessed with uh, obsessed with Shockwave and uh, Soundwave. Um, Shockwave is probably my favorite Decepticon. Um, for the longest time, it was Soundwave though. But I don't know something about the just the, the faceplate design. Any any character that hits that stride really works out for me. I'm a big fan. As I grew up, I became a bigger fan of uh, Warpath and stuff like that. Um, it can kind of just bounce all over the place a lot, but definitely Shockwave and um, Omega Supreme top like two if I had to like nail it down. Hopefully, right. I'm uh, being a little bit more coherent with this. No, 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 you're good. You're good. I'm following you. I'm like, I, I like that you name dropped uh, Cobra Commander and Warpath. Those are two I, I didn't think of, but yeah, I definitely like those guys. Um, but yeah. The uh, main Oh, surprise, surprise. The main bad guy is cool. Hey, everybody, I like Megatron. I just got the uh, the Legacy Armada Megatron, and I'm really excited to open that because that that was a toy I actually had when I was a kid. So I'm I'm really excited to see how the new version of it turned out. Um, but oh, uh, I, oh, go ahead. I was going to just remember. Um, I think his name is Wedge. I think it's Wedge. Um, Antilles? The no, not Wedge. Uh, not not the Star. <laughs> so, Transformers Robots in Disguise um, from 2005, I believe it is the mm -hmm. Constructobots or whatever. It's like it, it's like the Dinobots, but they're construction vehicles. Oh yeah, um, build build king. Yeah, the the orange uh, dozer. To me, that figure is like the epitome of what a good Transformers toy should be. Just, uh, same thing as what you said for Wedge Dynamite. is the orange dozer. Yeah, Wedge. That I mean, I still have my original Wedge. Like to me, like everything about that toy, it just sells it. Like it's it's the right amount of like this is a fun toy to play with when it is like flipped out into like robot mode. Everything goes away. You could easily flip his little like pushers in front of his hands, and it's just like whether they intended it or not. It's just like he has like these scoop hands to fight with or do whatever um the gun thing works just perfectly well to me um like I, i've always bought it as a gun 
and the fact that it works as it's intended to be like the top of the dozer part, like the added extra part, whenever it's in vehicle mode, just further sells it. It's like the the right kind of like weapon storage integration that I like in my figures. Um, I I remember almost nothing of the character from this series. I remember that toy almost every day. I mean, I have it put on a shelf like in plain view, but I'd say that one for me for like physical property. Nice. Uh, I was just I was just looking around on Google Images for him. Were you aware he cropped up in Rescue Bots? Oh yeah, I saw somebody post about it in um one of the Facebook groups. Yeah, this is this is the image of him I found. I, I put in the chat. It's an audio podcast, but it looks like he was in a couple episodes. I don't know if he ever did. They ever do another wedge little baby figure? I don't know. Let me let me search specifically Rescue Bots Wedge and see if it comes up with a toy. They must have. Gosh, they must there have. Is. Yeah, man, that's great. God, that's great. Yeah, there's a couple different ones. That reminds me of that um, Rescue Heroes. Uh, man, we should have found a way to put Rescue Heroes in this. Um, <laughs> uh, of Rescue Heroes, uh, there's like a little robot that's orange. It's pretty much identical to that kind of setup. Yeah, I, f- I think I know what you're talking about there, too, because Rescue Heroes is, uh, I don't know if we could have made it work in here, because that's more of like a mid-2000s property, whereas, whereas much like pop culture generally acknowledges G.I. Joe and Transformers as 80s properties, even though they've never really gone away since. Um, hmm. But uh, let's let's go ahead and get into like some of the questions kind of oriented on the, the comics and our experience with them. Uh So, first of all, how much of the comics have each of us read? Uh, Obviously, we've said a couple times now, neither of us have a whole ton of comic experience, uh, but I've learned as I've gotten more and more into G.I. Joe over the last couple of years that the Marvel comic and the IDW comic written by Lauri Hama are like what a lot of hardcore fans consider to be the main G.I. Joe fiction, and so I've always wanted to check it out, hence this podcast. Uh, But also, um, like, I've just never really dived too deep into it. I did briefly try and just read it on my own last year, and I got up to, I want to say, like, issue 15 or 16, and then I just got busy with other things. Uh, But uh, I definitely do want to get... Uh, I, I I would love for this podcast to last long enough for us to get up to current, but seeing as we're going month to month, that'll probably never happen. Uh, this podcast is just going to go until the two of us get tired of it, basically. Uh, but um, as far as Transformers comics go, I have read the original uh, Marvel miniseries. I have read uh, Last Stand of the Wreckers, and I have read a lot of IDW Phase 2. I've read both Windblade miniseries. I read Till All Are One. I've read a bit of uh, More Than Meets the Eye and Robots in Disguise, uh, but I haven't read all those books. And uh, the only thing from IDW 2.0 I've read is like I read the first four or five issues of the new ongoing and really didn't care for it. Uh, and then I read the uh, the Wreckers miniseries they did right before they lost the license, uh, Tread and Circuit, and that was really fun. I didn't mind that too much, but uh, yeah, just kind of a, a scattershot experience of the comics for me. Uh, but Snowcone, uh, how about you? Um, like I was saying earlier, just a couple of uh, odd series, like I'd read like weird Transformers series early on, um, a little bit of like weird like dreamwave stuff like i'd try to pick up like the uh i remember like whenever all hail megatron was coming out i tried to read some of that i think that um, was idw i could be wrong i think that i think that was idw phase yeah. one um but like whenever that was out like i remember seeing that and like picking that new like thing up and also trying to like read some of the dreamwave stuff that was in like uh the the comic shop i was picking up that in um but not too much I have like the Transformers Marvel crossover um, and a little bit of like the G.I. Joe crossover. Mm -hmm. Uh, Almost no, if if not none at all uh, for G.I. Joe comics. Oh, you did just jog my memory, though. I have read uh, Star Trek versus Transformers. I did read that comic and that comic was an absurd joy of a thing, I will say. Yeah. Uh Um, Last of the Wreckers is probably like my favorite thing uh, in like the, the comic continuity for transformers. Um, I read like the IDW reset 
um, where they had like, the little like rebel character and stuff like that. And then you told me that spoiler. I remember we were talking. Yeah. Sorry about it's that. It, it's funny. It's funny as shit. You're like, Hey, isn't that the whole thing that ended like this? And I was just like, Oh shit. I, I had no idea how it ended. I ended up like not being able to read some of the issues. And so I just kind of like fell off of it. Mm hmm. It's hilarious too, because it was super obvious to me even before they revealed it. So the fact that you didn't realize, like, I was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I guess we should also discuss, since we're going to be going into uh, the comics next week, um, what reading order we're going to be using for the books. Uh, because obviously we're starting all the way back at the original Marvel runs for both series. Um and my plan is to basically, like I said, just discuss whatever was released this month 40 years ago, starting with A Real American Hero number 1 from June of 1982. Uh, but I am using a couple of articles to kind of uh, keep me on track and just like keep apprised of like, okay, this miniseries starts here, or this one shot happens here. Uh, so I'm using the comicbooktreasury.com G.I. Joe A Real American Hero reading order, and I am using the Marvel Crossovers uh, blog spots for the uh, the Marvel Transformers when we get to it, which I should just uh, for people who don't know, and also Cody potentially, um, mm -hmm. it's going to be a while before we get to Transformers because Transformers starts in September of 1984, so we've got like almost two years before we start talking about Transformers comics. Nice. Yeah, uh, but um, I guess that leads us to our final question, which uh, I wanted to just be kind of like a general thing to close us out. It's just like for both franchises or even if there's one that is more overwhelmingly so, what's like the next thing you're most excited about? What, what are you looking forward to as a fan of these franchises? And Cody, I'm going to let you take this one first, or Snowcone, I'm sorry. Um, well, for G.I. Joe, it's probably going to be right now the Dragonfly. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk uh, more about that next episode. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I mean, the the concept of that movie is pretty neat, but I've kind of like been able to like I don't need like the a GI Joe cartoon or like movie necessarily. I kind of like how it's been going with Classified. Like I don't know. Um, mainly just whatever whatever is going on with Classified. That's what I want. Um, for Transformers. Um, Definitely really excited for the tidal wave figure that's most certainly happening. Um, I'm interested to see what we're going to start doing with uh, some of the other media that they've announced that Legacy is going to incorporate, um, like Chase from um, Rescue Box or whatever, and Strong Arm in like a modern design. And I don't know, unintentionally two police officers, but whatever. Um, uh, but I don't know, man. It's it's mainly just like the the toys. Um, more Earthrise or Earthspark, I mean, definitely uh, excited about that. But I think that's about it. Uh, the whatever sequel to the Rise of the Beasts. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably in a similar boat. Uh, I, I should say we've both been keeping up with Earthspark and really enjoying it. Uh, we'll probably talk about it when the next batch of episodes releases. Uh, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I've been enjoying that show quite a bit. But primarily for me, it is also kind of a toy thing. Because like I said earlier, both of us are more so toy guys than anything else. Uh, the fiction is kind of just a vehicle with which to enjoy the toys for me. So like... Um, right now, of things we definitely 100% know are coming, uh, it's going to be for Transformers, that Armada Optimus, I, I gotta get my hands on that thing as soon as possible, um, and, like, it's probably going to be my toy of the year. I've got some, I, I've gotten some really good stuff so far this year, and I've got some stuff actually in my two open pile that I anticipate being a contender for toy of the year, but, like, if it's if it's not that Armada Optimus, then that's going to be a serious letdown for me because like I'm not going to lie, I have I have teared up just thinking about that toy a couple times now. Uh, so I'm I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, and similarly, uh, the classified series Televiper with Trouble Bubble. I am I am super stoked for that thing. I actually have free pre-ordered on Pulse right now. 
so I can use each head sculpt in my display um, because I've I've been asking for trouble bubbles since they started doing vehicles in the line, and the the Tell Viper is one of my childhood collections. So that brings me one step closer to getting that display. Um, but uh, oh, you might want to hear my idea just for me to interject real quick. Sure. Um, I pre-ordered two on Pulse. Mm-hmm. I know I want at least two. Three is fine. That's a, that's a totally cool number, but here's why I only did two. What I've seen with most of the figures now recently is they have produced enough. They're they're now hitting stores evenly and correctly enough that it seems like we're seeing stuff go on sale all the time. Almost everything. There's a couple of like G.I. Joe lines that we didn't get that are that didn't really hit on sale yet. But as far as like the vehicle stuff, like I've seen almost every single vehicle pack go on sale. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna wait and try to army build with the on sale version. Or if I only have two, then maybe I only have two and I get whatever future versions they end up releasing after that. True. And I definitely would buy one or two more if they went on sale. But also, like, it's a Pulse exclusive. And Pulse only tends to do, like, sales during the holidays. Yeah. So who knows if it's going to last that long. It's kind of my 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 brain uh, rot right there. But... Uh, I don't know. It's also like I I don't have them all under the same order on the same card. I'm not going to get hit for $150 on the same card at once. I've got I I have free cards, folks. So I've I've got one on each card. Uh so it'll be a little easier to deal with. Um but that is uh that is pretty much it for our FAQ and for our inaugural uh, first episode of the podcast did pretty well. We're a little under forty minutes here, uh, and uh, yeah, I think I think that is pretty much everything we need to cover. So why don't we go into like uh, plugging our uh, personal uh, social medias and whatnot? So if you guys want to connect with me uh, somewhere else and you haven't already, hey, I'm the Vacuuminator. I make YouTube videos. They're things you're gonna want to find them on YouTube.com at the Vacuuminator. I also have a uh, TikTok where I post clips of my videos. That's at the underscore vacuuminator. I have an Instagram where I post action figure photography, a new photo every day at the underscore vacuuminator. And I also have Tumblr and Twitter where I consolidate all my content together. You're going to be able to find links to everything uh, as well as various opinions and reactions to things uh, on Twitter at the vacuuminator and on Tumblr, the vacuuminator.tumblr.com. Uh, but Snow Cone, where can folks find you out there on the internet well the main place to find me right now is probably going to be uh just on instagram just to view what's going on with my life uh never underscore robot uh snow 83 on just about everything else you could think of some variation of that uh find me on xbox find me on playstation nintendo whatever uh nintendo you have to have a code for that so uh never mind but anyways yes All right. Well, thank you very much, folks, for listening to this first episode zero kind of secret origins edition of Saturday Morning Panels, a G.I. Joe and Transformers podcast brought to you by Modular Media. We hope to see you back here next week for our first proper episode where we will be covering uh, topics such as Yojo June 2023 so far, the first issue of the Marvel G.I. Joe Real American Hero comic, and our thoughts on Transformers Rise of the Beasts. But until then, until all are one, remember, knowing is half the battle. We'll see you next time.